Here is a really cheap and nasty TV that I picked up at the dump today. Made by JTC, JTEC Cameras. Looks like they were trying to rip off JVC. LED TV JTC 2032C. It's a 32-inch television. However, the part that I'm interested in is the LED. The TV is not only cheap and nasty, it's also most definitely broken. The power cord has been chopped off and the coaxial digital audio output has been melted and looks like something's been arcing on the antenna input. It turns out the back panel is only this little thing with the speakers in it. Most of the back of the TV is the actual display assembly, which has been painted black, so that's kind of cheap. I now have a temporary mains cable connected. Now, I'm not going to plug this straight in. Instead, I have this little adapter right here. Now, yes, the, uh, the setup makes it look as if the light bulb was connected in parallel to the device under test, but the internal wiring of this is actually so that the light bulb is in series. So if the TV, if the power supply happens to have a short, the light bulb is going to turn on and I'm not going to have anything blow up. Hopefully. So I'm now going to step back a little bit and I'm going to apply power to the unit. Get the light bulb into the shot. Here we go. Oh, what a surprise. I thought something was going to go pop. Power is on. Light bulb is off. Let's see. Oh! <laughs> I get a standby light right there. Standby. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I guess I gotta change my plan here. Uh, let's see if we can turn this on. I turned the TV around carefully. I took the light bulb out of the circuit. Let's reapply power. Power is on. Standby light is on. Let's press power on the TV. LED turns blue. Oh, look at that. JTAC cameras. Empty database. So there are no stations saved. Let's see if I can uh, get this to display a video signal. The LG Blu-ray player has been connected to the TV through the SCART input, so let's press the source button. Oh, there we go. Let's see. SCART. And, oh, and there we go. Look at that! I reconnected the speakers in the back panel and as you can clearly hear they do sound awful but the audio does work. I installed a new power cord spliced it into the original connectors right there double layer of heat shrink tubing I was able to use one of the mounting points of the circuit board for this uh, strain relief and then right here, now this is where a proper strain relief would go, but I don't have anything like that. So I used a double layer of heat shrink tubing to hopefully keep the exposed metal edges from wearing through the insulation of this cable. I mean, even if it happens, this is nicely grounded, connected to safety ground. So all that's going to happen is uh, it's going to trip a circuit breaker. I took a closer look at the main board and there is really nothing wrong on here. Even the capacitors are all still fine. They are cheap, of course, made by Capxon, so that's nothing special. And then here, this is rather interesting. This is a result of this TV being cheap and being probably sold all over the world. The tuner is interchangeable. You take off this uh, little side plate and this whole module 
just uh, simply unplugs. There is this uh, proprietary connector. Well, it's not proprietary, but um, <laughs> I guess it's not going to accept anything aside from a uh, similar tuner module. Just plugs into there. It even has some, uh, some rails that it slides into, as you can see. So that's a really interesting design. Now, as for this accident, I guess what saved this TV is that uh, the arcing occurred only to uh, parts that are grounded. This is grounded. This is grounded. The whole TV is grounded. So, my guess is the previous owners threw this away just simply because they didn't know if this TV was still safe. The TV has been reassembled, which was difficult because I was expecting this to be a final teardown, so I didn't remember where all the screws went. So I had to figure that out from scratch. I cleaned up the unit using window cleaner, and it does look pretty decent now. Of course, being a cheap TV, there is plenty of glossy black plastic, which is all scratched up. That's just what happens with that stuff over time. Now, something that I wanted to demonstrate is uh, the stand of this TV is... It's just sensationally cheap. If you, if you turn this TV, you can turn it, but just listen to this. Here is the JTEC JTC television set up and running in the living room. I don't have the remote control for this, but it does actually have all the buttons on the unit itself that you need to operate the menu. So I was able to program the tuner. Interestingly, the tuner will only do analog TV and DVB-T digital terrestrial television. It won't do DVB-C, which is digital cable television. And since this house only has the cable service, I can only use the analog part of the tuner. But I've been running this for several hours and it works flawlessly. Also, I hooked up the cable TV box up to this using the HDMI and also the HDMI inputs do work. So it seems we have a fully functional TV, which is very nice. Really, the only unfortunate thing is that this 32-inch TV only has the HD-ready resolution. It's not a full HD TV, so unfortunately it doesn't get a very sharp picture. Of course, this being analog TV, it looks even worse. Now, something that I can do with the cheap JTAG TV is I can replace this cheap TV, which I've been using as a preview monitor for some of my more advanced video productions. This is an ancient first-generation non-HD LCD television. It does not even have HDMI. As you can see, it's absolutely massive and it's missing the stand, so I have to keep it on this chair. <laughs> 